looks like we are live and it's just a few seconds before 6 p.m. Eastern in these United States and I'm going to try to pull up on the laptop the chat and by the way the Clivester might be popping in so we'll see how that goes Tom Austin in the meanwhile is in the house and uh, Thomas Burnett says chop 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 chip there you go hi all from Vegas and uh, our wags the wrench gangs in the house there you go troll free zone there we go fantastic Sue Craig well thank you this is an oldie but a goodie Where is this? I think this was from the Georgetown University shop yeah it's a Corbin limited suit from the Georgetown University shop that dates it I was buying suits in the late 70s from there and speak speak of the Clivester he just popped in I'm gonna put my headset in so I can hear him and uh, we just went live Clivester and I'm gonna cut to you so uh, say hello hey guys what's going on Craig or sorry chip how are you <laughs> I'm I'm doing fine I am now officially, I think, 61 years old, if I'm doing my math correct. So um, there's that. And um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show something here. Before we get started on the watches, I'm going to have like a, I'm going to like show a little something different each time just to kind of mix things up. You sound like you might have a cold, Clivester. A little congested, actually. We... Uh we were actually have some nice spring weather. Then all of a sudden the bottom fell out and we're back and old, old man winter showed up again. And you've been driving with the top down and you got yourself a little cold. No, I haven't. Yeah. You know, well, I, I was driving, uh, I was actually driving the Toyota. Well, actually I was driving the Mr. Two with the top up, but, um, not today. Ice. Oh, oh, well that's not good. Okay. Well, you got to take care of yourself, big guy. We, we are always, um, dependent on your content to keep us all straight so you got to take uh take real good care of yourself now i'm going to show something here actually one mm -hmm. person is not say say again one person is not Why do, goldberg oh okay <laughs> oh by the way he's got a nice lav lavalier mic why don't you ask him what mic he got because you might want to get the same mic i don't know what it is but they're I have a whole bunch of solutions I can suggest to you, but he's got one that he's using, and it seems to be working. Do you know if he's yeah. using a Windows machine or a Mac? I think he's a Mac guy as well. If he is, you might want to ask him what he's using because it sounded pretty good in one of his recent videos. Uh, I had made a comment on one of his videos a while back that he should fix his audio, and I think he finally did it. So anyway, on another topic briefly, I'm going to show a... Pair of, Happy birthday. I'm gonna oh thank you. I'm gonna show a pair of boots here. So um I'll cut to my camera real quick. So these boots are were sold by Browning, the people that sell the weapons and other stuff, I guess. And um these were their upland hunting boots, their featherweight upland hunting boots, and they are made of kangaroo leather. And I got these in the early 1980s. They've been resold once or twice. And they still sell them now, or Orvis sells them. And I think they're made by the same people. I think Gonkey made these. I'm not sure. But they're made in the USA. But you can still buy them. That's what's kind of cool. And the thing about kangaroo leather is it's very lightweight, very durable, very flexible. So if you need any kind of work boots uh, for any kind of heavy-duty type things uh, check out kangaroo as the leather of choice and then real quick I'm gonna cut to a few pictures here uh, again back to my laptop I'm showing there's a picture I just uploaded of the boots and there's some other stuff that I have that's kangaroo like kangaroo hats and there's a uh, baseball glove I have that's made of kangaroo I'm a real fan of um, of kangaroo leather and that that uh, bomber jacket there is made of kangaroo I've got a video on my channel and um, here's a photo from the around 1985, I would say, of me with the lovely Jennifer, and I'm wearing those boots in the photo, so roughly 1985-ish. So there you go. That proves that they will last the test of time. Uh, 
so there's that. We, we always like to, um, like the Clivester would do when he's dealing with a client, he, he brings forth the evidence. You know what I'm saying? So we bring forth the evidence. Now, on to the topic at hand. Are we going to talk about the uh, current blue Seiko Alpinist? We could. We could. If you could bring up a photo of it, um, we'll show it. Um, what The topic is everyday use case watches. And um, while, while we're figuring that out, why don't you pull up your first nominee? No, actually, I don't have any. I just... I, I was basically once in the race to come please, please, God, please don't tell me you guys are going to talk about the Seiko Blue Alpinist like everybody else on YouTube. So <laughs> okay, just, good. Just, oh, by bit. the way, we can stop with the happy birthdays. I've been spammed all day on Facebook. I mean, just relentlessly spammed. So, uh, and by the way, there's the uh, stunner, the Grand Seiko stunner there uh, with the second hand just kind of smoothing along. And there's the side view of it again. So, um, so here's the deal. I'm going to look real quick here in the chat, and then I'm going to suggest oh, damn. some perfect daily use watches. Are those boots made for watch wrangling? Absolutely, they would ideal watch wrangling boots. Um, let's see here. Uh, just seeing if there's anything productive in here to deal with. Uh, do you have any Minotaur leather products? I don't think so. Um, saw a day date in the pic with Jennifer. No, it wasn't a day date. I was wearing a um, GMT2 in that picture with, a, with, a, with an oyster bracelet. I had one with a Jubilee also, but that particular picture, it was um, the one with the... Um, I had an all black with the Jubilee... And but in that picture it was a um, red and was it red and blue they were? I think it was red and blue with the oyster. Anyway, uh, you know, the, you all know what it was. Uh, let's see. Uh, it's unbelievable how well you take care of your stuff. Um, I can't afford to keep buying new stuff all the time, so I got to take care of it. So there's that. Um, all right, so let's go on to a, a watch here. And you've, you guys have heard me talk about this before. I'm going to pull up Chrono 24, and I'm going to pull up a watch. Uh, let's see here. If you search, if you want to follow along with us, Clivester, I just went to Chrono 24, and I searched date just 36 millimeter. Okay. And there's one with a box, and it's a date just ivory. Roman numeral, it's five grand. It's a one six two three three. So just as an illustration, I'm just going to pull that one up real quick here. It's forty nine hundred and eighty nine dollars on Chrono twenty four. And um, box, it doesn't say papers, but it it looks it looks like a full deal yeah box original papers okay so um so a whopping five grand and let me get rid of this damn pop-up oh for crying out loud i clicked on it the wrong way i hate when they have all these damn pop-ups by the way that's why i don't put ads on these videos for the first 24 hours any of my subscribers that watch will not be irritated by ads okay so this thing looks gorgeous it looks like it's in really good shape. It's a steel and gold. It's got the Jubilee bracelet. Of course, the clasp is, you know, a stamped clasp, but those hold up fine. Then this bracelet looks nice and tight. It has the Roman numerals. I would rather have the loomed indices, personally, but some people like the Roman numerals. But this is a perfect example. This is a $5,000 watch that really could be an all-around watch for anybody. Um, your thoughts on a 36 mil date just steel and gold? Uh, all around are true, but I don't know. Of course, you know, casual sports and dress that those, you know, I think if you're lucky, you can maybe hit two out of the three, three, oof. which Actually, would you not? It would certainly work as a dress watch. 
It would certainly well, work know, with maybe, a casual, with jeans. Maybe as casual, though. Well, for $5,000, right? Yeah, if you're wearing jeans, if you're wearing, you know, whatever, I mean, that watch would go. Okay, with that. So so that's a, that's an Explorer 2, correct? 40 mil? 42. Well, see, I don't, I, th I think when you go up to 42, now you're pressing your luck as far as using it for dressy type situations. If we're talking all around here. I don't know that I would go 42. Some people just will wear anything um, in a dress situation, but there was a debate on your Facebook group about this earlier, about the size of the watch. And, I mean, right now I'm wearing a 35 mil dress watch. And, and I think it looks fantastic with, the, with what I'm wearing right now. I would not want a bigger watch. Now, 36 mil, fine. That's one millimeter bigger, right? That's fine. Right. But I just don't get... Yeah, so w the, the, the inner watch, what size is that, Clive? That is a 35... Uh, that's a 36 kind of thing of it. Okay, and that is that all gold? Yeah, that's rose gold. That's the Sigma. See, that's... That... Just... Uh, let me just see it alone with your shirt cuff. I think it looks classy as you know what. I think it looks great as a dress watch. Now, I don't know that, that you could push that into sport use as well. I mean, you could. You could wear it with jeans and a T-shirt. You know, uh, you could, but... Um, that would be more casual, I think, than sports. Okay, so let's see what else they say in the chat. Daily rotation is Hulk, Batman, pre-ceramic Pepsi, and 40-millimeter Polar Explorer. Um, uh, uh, that watch is a good watch, yeah, but seriously boring, says Barry. Um, Let's see, good deal on that Rolex with a Jubilee bracelet, both casual and dress use work. I hope there's a new 40 millimeter Explorer 2 coming at Basel World. Hey, Craig. Uh, hey, everybody. Rocking the Blanc Pan 50 Fathoms. I got loaned on review, enjoying until I have to return it tomorrow. What's up, Clive? That's from the Watch Lounge. Right. That's a really nice looking watch, Clive. Thanks. Are you talking about the gold one? You have to be specific, Thomas, because he had two showing there. Craig, did you see Clive's review of my collection? Any thoughts? No, I haven't seen it yet. I'll have to take a look. A, would you get some Gucci sleds? sleds? He means Gucci shoes? I had... I well, had. Then again, then again, since we're in the middle of an ice storm... I had, I I had Gucci um, loafers and I sold them. I just wasn't wearing them. I bought them new back in the early 80s, and I wore them a few times, but I sold them on eBay. Uh, uh, Craig, out of these options, which is best, a Tudor, a Bitcoin, a Tudor, plus some mutual funds, or a Steel Sports Rolex, Tom Austin? Okay, it, now, it, now, now, now Deadly's actually saying 50 Fathoms is the ultimate luxury diver, speaking from experience. And it's just like, okay, and I've seen that one. I've taken a few pictures of it. Mm -hmm. I do love that he has a Blanc Pain mil spec, and I do love that watch. Oh, my God, yeah. But You're talking about the really one that Dudley has, the one he yeah. has? But on the other hand, yeah, because it's 40. It's not like a dinner plate like the mm -hmm. regular 50 Fathoms. On the other hand, Dudley, uh, Dudley, if it comes on a leather strap, it's not really a diver now, is it? Yeah, but I don't think he has a leather on his. Didn't he switch it? No, he you know he totally has leather on his. Oh, he does. Okay. Yeah, they they you have to pay extra, a lot extra, to get the the bracelet. Okay. Well, I'd put a rubber strap on it if it were me. Yeah, um, of course. Yeah, likewise. Now, actually, now this is I've seen a few people say, but you know, to my line of thinking, I almost think the perfect all rounder would be the Rolex one in thirty nine millimeters, the Explorer one. I mean. Explore 139. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but it's, 
it's not anywhere near as dressy as a date just. Right? Uh, as dressy. Well, on the other hand, I think the I think the dial, though. I, I mean, really nice dial. I think the dial kind of brings it up a little bit. But, I, but I, and again, I don't think anyone is going to hit all three perfectly. But I almost think that probably is the closest. And it's relatively thin, right? right. It's 12 mils, isn't it? Yep. All right. So that's a possibility. Okay, so what about Omega? When we go to the older ones, remember when they used to be thinner and not quite as big as they are now? Remember, like, the original right. Bond watch? Uh, you know, and actually, like I said, one of the one of the newer DAs has, like, a 2014 ceramic, a Seamaster, and that's a... I think he picked it up for, like, maybe two, maybe a tiny bit over. Mm -hmm. And actually, for 2000 bucks, that is a heck of a good watch. Yeah. Even with the... Even with the ceramic bezel, for Pete's sake. I wonder how thick that watch is, though. I don't think it's... It didn't strike me as, like, unduly thick. The only mm -hmm. tr trouble is, is that, you know, and, and this is probably... I'm indoctrinated by the coronet, but I look at the bracelet of the Seamaster, I'm like, eh. Now they're talking about the 36-millimeter Explorer 1. I want to pull that up because that might be a player. Let me pull oh, yeah. that up. Well, okay, Here, here's my thoughts about the two. I've had, well, no, I've only had the 36, quite frankly. But a 39 is like a dressy sports watch. A 36 is like a sporty dress watch. Okay. I'm going to try to pull one up here so I can show them the, what we're talking about here. All right. Not that every everybody on Earth doesn't know what this is. Okay, here's one for forty eight hundred and fifty. For, for, I mean forty eight eighty. Uh, here's one. It looks like it's got all the goodies, box and everything, for fifty four ninety. It's a two thousand four F series. Right. So it's going to have a better bracelet and all of that. It's box and papers. Right. As soon as this loads in, I'll I'll 15. I'll show it. So this is a six-digit unit. So um, there's one with all the goodies for fifty-four hundred ninety dollars. Explore one thirty-six mil. That thing's only about twelve mils thick too, right? Or is it eleven point seven? Is it even less than twelve? Because some of the date chests are like eleven point seven mils. Okay, and Brian LP is asking, Clive, do you think the Datejust 41 is more of a sports watch? Uh, well, now keep in mind, it, that also depends on the configuration, because I think if you get, like, the smooth bezel with an Oyster bracelet, yeah. that's, that's a sport. You know, the thing is, Datejust itself even has a broad little uh, array of configurations. Oh, absolutely. But I... I, I just think that that's too big to, to put into dress purposes, uh, depending on how you're dressed and all. I, I, I just am not a fan of these big, overpowering watches when you're wearing a, a, sh a shirt cuff. Um, but that's me. Uh, so anyway, we got the uh, Explorer 1 up on the screen right now. $5,490, 2004. I think that that... Uh, that's a stunning watch that could be worn all the time. Beautiful case. And, and keep in mind, you know, the original sports watch was the Oyster Perpetual because it was water resistant. They're made fairly tough. They're made fairly durable. Yeah. So when you think about it, every, with the exception of like the, was it Cellini or the Cellini line? Yeah. A lot of Rolex, their whole forte is basically variations of dress watches i mean of sports watches yeah and i'll tell you people say they don't like the clasp you know the, the stamped uh clasp and all that but this one's got the flip lock on it it's going to hold up fine it's not going to accidentally come open i mean i wore those things for years and years with the flip lock you know they were mainly gmt2s or or submariners they all had it 
uh, when you got the oyster bracelet. And I never had any problem with the Jubilee bracelets without the flip lock. I never had any problem with them popping open. Right. So I think it's all of these things are exaggerated. I that's a lot of watch for five grand. I bet you if you offered him five grand, you'd walk away with it. Uh, I don't know. It's not like there's a it's not like there's a whole uh, bunch of Rolex surplus right now. Well, but there were a bunch of them for around five grand on Chrono Twenty Four, and that one was fifty four. It has all the box and papers. I mean, you'd offer them whatever fifty two hundred, whatever. But I mean, I'm just saying that's a lot of watch. Uh, you could wear that watch the rest of your life. Oh, well, really? Yeah. The thing is, though, really, any of the watches. I mean, you know, if you, something like this one or the forty millimeter. Uh, Explorer 2 or the 39 Explorer 1 or the GMT literally about the only thing that I don't think that would work for is maybe a tuxedo maybe and really most of us how many times are we going to wear a tux when we get yeah. married yeah well I'm just I, I just optically when I see people wearing a suit even with ju even with just barrel cuffs, forget about French cuffs, but even just barrel cuffs, and they're wearing some huge watch that is down over the bone on their wrist because it won't go underneath the shirt, and it's just sitting there huge. I just think it looks pretty ridiculous. It looks like you're, I don't know, like you're trying to show off your watch or whatever. I don't, I don't know what the deal is with it, but um, I guess I'm just way too old-fashioned especially now that i'm officially uh 61 i'm way over the hill but uh i just don't think it looks classic and by the way speaking well, wait a minute. What, what time of the day were you born i have no idea but by the way speak well, you may not officially be 61 yeah. you may have been born in the evening that's right so um technically you don't know officially you're over 61 <laughs> until midnight until midnight tonight by the way I discovered another podcast today. I listened to a number of podcasts, and uh, I'll actually mention a few that I listened to. But uh, there's one that I discovered today that is called Five Things, and I'll try to show it here. Oh, no, well, it's this one down in the bottom corner, Five Things. Let's see the big let, number five. Right. And it's pretty cool. It's by Lisa Birnbach, B-I-R-N-B-A-C-H. And I came across this, um, and it's a short podcast, like 10, 15 minutes long each time. She puts it out once a week. And she talks about five things she likes or whatever. And yeah. um, it's well yeah, done. Actually, that's, that's one of the things I used to like about Archie Luxury. He would get to the point, he would, he, he'd, he'd do it in five minutes and be done with it. And it's just like... He might repeat himself a couple of times. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, geez, That's the uh, way I do all my product review videos. I get right into it. I don't have any intros or anything. I get right into it. That's a solicitor. I get right into uh, it, and I bang out the review, and then I'm done. Uh, and a lot of people, I think, like that. But anyway, getting back to Lisa Birnbach, what was interesting was I knew I knew that name. And then I searched her name, and she's the one that wrote a book back in 1980 called The Preppy Handbook. It's one of the coolest little books, and I got one back in 1980. I'm going to dig it out. I've got it somewhere around here. I'm going to do a show about it uh, maybe next week or something. But um, it's a cool here, book. Go yeah. ahead. Now, Kelsowitz actually was texting me just now on Facebook Messenger. Mm -hmm. But he was saying, now here's the funny part. This is like in real time. Mm -hmm. What's up, Clive? I'm looking into some discount divers. I'm thinking about the new Omega Seamaster 300 or Tudor Black Bay. What do you think? Now, you care to guess what my response was? Um, I mean, I don't know. I I would go with, with the Omega every time, but that's yep. what you did? Yep. Absolutely, I'd go with the Omega. It's not. That's a no-brainer. I think. Are, are they are they priced comparably? Uh, I think roughly, yeah. 
So so anyway, let me finish with Lisa Birnbach. So here's the deal. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk. I'll talk about the book in a different uh, show, but it's called the Preppy Handbook. It's out of print. I don't know if you can find one used somewhere. But anyway, it's the coolest little book. It goes through like how people should dress and the places they should go to, the places they should eat, all these things to be a preppy, right? Remember back in the day when everybody was trying to be a preppy, right? So this book was on the New York Times bestseller list for like 30 weeks or something. You know, it's, it's just a cool tongue-in-cheek, fun book, and she's just a really cool person, I think. Um, and it's neat that she's doing this, this podcast so anyway, we'll take a trip down memory lane sometime. We'll do a show. We'll talk about the Preppy Handbook and, and all that fun stuff in there. I think she might even talk about watches in there somewhere, but we'll see about what's in there. Uh, she talks about everything else for sure. I love the leather strap on the BBB, said Thomas. Um, had a meeting today, and the guy attorney had a massive steel watch on outside of his cuff. Might have had diamonds on it. Incredible dis- distraction. Made me not take him seriously, <laughs> says David Williams. Um, let's see here. If there's anything else we're missing. What do you think about buying a head-only Rolex without the bracelet? I wouldn't do it personally, but... If you can get a real good deal, like, for example, if you get a real good deal on a day date because it doesn't okay. have the bracelet. Now, here's a, here's a comment by Kalman, mm-hmm. Adaptive Kalman. Hi, Craig. I'm having my birthday today, and you bring my Rolex-wearing Bitcoin-hating stream at Nemesis Clive. Well, Adaptive Kalman, if you want to celebrate your birthday and celebrate Craig's birthday, maybe you could super chat $20 and get me booted from the live stream. By the way, if anybody super chats today... Um, we'll, I will donate whatever they super chat. I will double it, and I will donate it to the Cowgirls Live Show, to Sarah's personal Bitcoin account. I will send her Bitcoin double value if anybody does super chat. And I never ask for super chats, but this would be a good cause. Help, help the young lady out. I will double whatever you send and send it to her in Bitcoin. She made a comment on her show the other night that she's got a strong hand. She's holding her Bitcoin. She's not going to sell. So she's got intestinal fortitude. She's a tough cookie anyway. Have you, have you seen any videos of her riding, Clive? Any cowgirl would have to, any, any cowgirl cowboy by definition are tough cookies. She's no joke. She was talking one time about one time the horse fell and fell on her and like rolled over and stuff. And she said, yeah, I think I broke my ankle, but I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty funny stuff i think i broke my ankle but i'm not really sure yeah of course she didn't bother to go and get an x-ray or anything they just tape it up and keep going right yep pretty much so um so that's pretty funny stuff uh let's see what else is in here diamonds on a men watch make me think rapper drug dealer whatever yeah i'm not a big fan of any diamonds on a on a watch a man's watch Let's see, Planet Ocean. Planet Oceans are pretty big, right? Pretty thick. Right. Yeah, I'm not going that direction. Clive. uh, Let's see. You can't run a channel without some humor. Um, Okay. Well, David just super chatted $5, so she's got $10 on the way. Tour in Bitcoin. Uh, I have the preppy handbook. <laughs> Chip is an acceptable preppy name. Do you really have the book, R Wags? Or are you just funning me? Um, well, I think a lot of people had it back in the day. It sold pretty well. It, it, like I say, it was on the bestseller list for quite a while. I got it from her. She came into town and the local bookstore. And um, and I went and and met her and get, just got it from her when she was you know doing the the book tour. Um, now Brian L P S has a point. He says the Seamaster Aquaterra is a good all arounder. That makes sense. And don't they also have that Roadmaster? Uh yeah. Or where rail, Railmaster? Oh, Railmaster. Railmaster. Yeah. Yeah. Seamaster. Flight. I'm getting a flight master, but that's not a good all-arounder. Oh, my God, no. 
hold your Bitcoin tightly, but hold your reins loosely. There you go. By the way, I just posted a video also on my Facebook from a guy that's a programmer that did a video about Bitcoin. And he was talking about there's an article in the New York Times about a guy that, that claims that Bitcoin basically saved his life. He's down in Venezuela and he put all his money in Bitcoin. And, you know, evidently there are people literally starving down there and stuff, you know, <laughs> that, uh, that didn't take precautions because of the huge inflation rate, right? And right. So, so there's an article in the New York Times about it. And this guy, Ivan on Tech, he's from Belarus and he knows about you know, communism and all that stuff, right? And so he did a video talking about it, and it's pretty freaking cool video. So I posted that on my Facebook just a little while ago. I don't usually share other people's content, but I did share that. Uh, don't you think that really most low-budget $150 watches could be a watch for life? Not usually, Thomas. Usually they don't hold up that well. The bracelets kind of fall apart on them. Um, sometimes they don't hold up that well, but maybe some of them would. Um, but, uh, I tend to get higher end stuff just cause I'm insane about that kind of stuff, about quality. I like just, you know, well-made stuff around me. So I would spend a little more than the 150, maybe get up in the $500 range. You can probably get a pretty solid Seiko for that. Um, so, and I'll tell you, the Apple Watches are real well made, but then again, they'll go obsolete after three or four years. And you have to get another one, but they're still not that expensive, and they're very well made. Correct? Well, it's the battery. The battery will go out, so that's the yeah. whole point. Yeah. Let's see. Do you think Steve sells most of his watches as a watch for life? Steve sells a lot of watches to collectors. Right. So, no, we're not talking about collectors here. On At this point, we're talking about watches that people would actually wear and use every day for a long, extended period of time. And you can do both. You could have a collection, and you could also have a daily wear watch that, you know, that you just don't care if it gets beat up and all that kind of stuff. Um, socialism does not work. Yeah, he, he talked about that a lot in the video. It, it's really a cool video, the, the points he made. Um, and one point well, he made that was one interesting... Of, one, of, uh, garbage, one of Garbage Fire's little, little pet little... Uh, was when he talked about, well, in theory, and, and Garbage Fire would always respond, well, in theory, communism works. Yeah, well, one point that he made was, that was I found really interesting. He said... Many, many, many years ago, it was unthought of that you would separate religion from government, right? It was all together, okay? And he said now the thought of separating currency from the government, nobody would think that you could do it, right? But he thinks uh. the same thing is going to happen with currency that happened with religion, where it's going to be separated. It's going to be a separate thing. And that's what Bitcoin is. And, and so that, I thought that was an interesting point. And by the way, guys, right now I've got people text me on WhatsApp, uh, Facebook Messenger, and just iMessage. So in case I'm looking bored, I'm looking away. So I'm just trying to keep up, to keep all the plates spinning, keep all the balls in the air. Craig, please ask Clive about the awesome twins. Should I make them super chat to get an answer on that? No, not if you want to keep that's 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 a reference to garbage fire. Okay. Not if you want to keep it family friendly. Okay, gotcha. Brad Tech Webcast is in the house. Um, Craig, Craig, you're not reading not. you're not reading my comments. I just saw it the first comment just now, Brad. I didn't see your comment before this. Maybe I wasn't watching. Uh, Check yourself. How do you negotiate on lesser Rolex, i.e. gold or two-tone? I don't seem to get anywhere with ADs. Well, um, the only way to be able to negotiate is to be able to walk away. And also have the money in your hand. Well, yeah. That's well, I helpful. Don't think a lot of, I don't think a lot of them really care about that one, really, because there's such 
there is such a shortage of them. Well, wait, isn't he talking about... He's not talking about the one that's... That's true. Gold, yeah. He, but, that's true. But overall, though... I tell like, you, my, my AD here in Frederick, Maryland would negotiate with him if he came in there with cash. I guarantee you they would. So you got to find the right AD. You might have to go out in the country a little bit. You know, you might have to you know, go somewhere. Now here's, here's a Sham Habib. Many may disagree with me, but I think the best daily wear is the 39 millimeter Explorer 214270, 2016 version with a longer minute hand. Hey, Clive and Craig. Sean, yeah, you mean if you like if you like larger watches, absolutely. But like for example, with what I'm wearing right now, I'm. I'm showing my shirt cuff right now. You got to show it to you too, Clive. So okay. um, if I was wearing a 39 mil watch right now, I don't think it would work as well with what I'm wearing right now. This is a fairly tight French cuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, this watch goes underneath it. No problem. Don't, this, you, mean a free, don't you mean a freedom cuff? Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> but this is, this is, you know, a 10 millimeter thick watch. And it's 35 mils. I don't think a 39 would look appropriate with this outfit. So it all depends on your wrist size, the size of your shirts. See, my problem is I've got to fit to my neck. This is a size 16. And my arms are abnormally large for a size 16. So the cuffs are tight. So everybody's going to be different, right? If I, if I wore, like, a size 17 shirt and I had thin wrists, I'd have plenty of room, right? I noticed the other day Steve had a lot of room. He could fit, like, a monster under his shirt. So it all depends on how much slack. And I'm not going to spend the money to have all my shirts custom made. And then, of course, I'd have to have the suits custom made. So I'd have to have more room here in the, in the suit for the right. bigger shirt. It's a, it's a, you know, you're chasing your tail. So, um, okay. you, you know, now, watches, Sean, watches were a certain size for many, 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 many years. They were that size for a reason. It was the correct size. Watches have gotten huge lately, and that doesn't mean that all of a sudden that's the correct size, right? Because just because right. everybody has decided that everything should be huge. The only um, person that's really the only the only person that is really uh, qualified to give their opinion about the we watch lost size you. for you. We we lost your video feed. We're seeing your watch now. There we go. No, I, I muted the I put the camera on. Oh, okay. I put the on for a second. Okay. But the only person that is really qualified to give an opinion as to the watch size for you. Is you. That's right. You got to really try it. You got to really go and see, touch, and feel. And and, and here's here's actually one of the things. Now, there's a comment. Uh, our wags, Craig. I've never done super chat, but did the dollar sign and donated nine ninety nine. It said done with done with the check, but that never came up on the chat. Any idea what happened? No idea. <laughs> I don't, hold on, I'm gonna throw my up just try it. Quick. Just try it again. That's all we can say. <laughs> try it again. Um, somebody said, "How about a vintage 34 millimeter Rolex date?" Um, uh, yeah, I was getting ready. I was getting ready to address that myself. Reference 1500. Uh, yeah, actually, yeah. In other words, that's yeah. So it's, I, I yeah there. If that if that's a size that you can that looks good on your wrist, if it's if you're young or if your eyes are sharp enough to read the time and the date, yeah, I think I think the I think the thirty fours are probably some of the best bargains in ro vintage Rolex out there. Absolutely. I, I, I th yeah, the Air King. Well, he's already got Apple. a thirty four millimeter Air King, so. Well, yeah, but he's like, well, should I trade that and get it? It's like God, no, it's like. That, it's not like you're. It's not like you've spent big money on the Air King. It's not like you're really spending big money on the date. Get both for Pete's sake. Well, personally, I'd rather have the Air King than the date. I I, I wouldn't want a date on a watch that small. I'd rather have the no no date. Correct. Well, and so, well, yeah. 
I think it's a better watch. I, I'd stay with the Air King, personally. Um, what if he's a sailor? Well, there's that. Uh, manual wine, GS is the perfect dress watch as well. Yeah. Or just get the 9F like I've got and call it a day. Um, let's see. Getting, somebody's getting ready for work. Somebody asked me the other day to do the video streams a little later. And, and I was doing them earlier for people in Europe. But this is still not super late for people in London, right? It's coming up on towards 11 o'clock, right? 11, yeah, well, it's starting at 11 o'clock, yes. It's 11.40 right now. Oh, it is? In London? Alexa, what time is it in London? The time in London is 11.40 p.m. Uh-oh. That's getting a little late. Tiny bit. Um, now, if I could have given an answer, I'd probably then call Adrian from Barking Jack. I agree, Chip. Some small watches, watches are beautiful. Craig, I would have thought you would have custom shirts made. No, I, I don't like to just, you know, spend more money and, unless I really have to. Um, if I can get it off the off the rack and it's good good stuff, I'll do that. Um, let's see here. Are you going to buy an Omega from Steve, Craig? No, I don't think so. Uh, what is a huge size? It's all relative to risk proportionality. Well, William says, Dudley says, not really. Most people don't have huge wrists. Um, some people do. I'll grant you. Some NFL football stars have huge wrists. But um, for most people, let's say, that have a 7.5-inch wrist or smaller, if they get like a deep C and put it on their wrist, it looks pretty ridiculous, if you ask me. If they love it, fine. That's all cool. But that doesn't make it look less ridiculous. Uh, those watches are super thick, super huge. That's what they are. And if you like that sort of thing, then there you go. It's 1741 in Texas. 40 millimeter is the cutoff point for me, as Sham says. Um, Speedmaster Moonwatch, the Omega to uh, get. Hisham, Hisham, you have a date just 41. I will take that date just 41. Thank you. Please send that to Clive Watch Wrangler. Care of Rolex, to, overly large Rolex disposal service, 3601 North Class and Boulevard. Sweet. Now, is that a date just uh, 41 with the white gold fluted bezel? Yes. <clears throat> with the Jubilee? I believe it is the Jubilee, yes. Well, there you go. That's the one to get if you're going to get that. Clay no, no, he said 40 is the cutoff, so he needs to send this 41 date just to me. Okay. Um, absolutely. Clay says he's got a 9-inch wrist. So there's that. Well, you know, Dudley bought the 40 mil day date so he's heavily heavily invested in the bigger watch thing <laughs> oh yeah and Hisham, Hisham is a Hisham is a slender fellow and mm -hmm. he's also got a date 840 he might have a couple come to think of it yeah the date 840 is a, a kind of an unusual beast in that it's a real statement power watch it's it's what i would call the the deal maker watch um but here's the thing about the date 840 is it's relatively thin it's 12 mils thin and it it has a really nice presence on the wrist it really looks classy i think on the wrist so if you're going to sport a bigger watch as an all-arounder i think that's the limit i, I think yes. that's there you can do it but I wouldn't. I wouldn't even want to go to the forty-one date just personally for an all-rounder. No, I have a C, C dollar forty-three and seven and a half inch wrists. After due consideration, I do feel that it's too big and may sell. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I, uh, for for a watch that you're going to wear a lot. Remember, the subject matter here is watches that you're going to wear a lot. This isn't 
a watch that you're going to have setting aside and occasionally put on your wrist, that's not the subject matter. Subject matter is something you're going to wear a lot, right? So that's what we're talking about. Right. And that's why I, got, I bought the titanium diver, even though it's a relatively large watch, it wears, it wears every bit as comfortable as my 40 mil older uh, GMT, which the older GMT that I had is more comfortable on wrist than the new ones they have now because it's lighter weight. The fact that they made these watches heavier doesn't make them more comfortable on wrist. Um, so there's that. Show that watch one more time, that uh, integrated Here, bracelet. No, 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 you don't like it. Show, well, show it one more time. No. I think it's pretty cool. I mean, integrated I wouldn't bracelet. buy it for me, but it looks really good. It looks really solid. It looks like it would, it would, that would, that would make an all-arounder. I think that could be used as an all-arounder. How thick is yep. it? Uh, not terribly, not terribly thick. Is it? Would you say it's the same thickness as like a Explorer One, or or thinner, or thicker? Thinner. It's it's an oyster quartz. Yeah, I know what I know what it is, but I just didn't know how thick those were. Kind of nice. You pick it up, and you know, it's just how many mils? Is, how many mils is it? Thirty six. It's got great presence, though. It, that, that would be a good all-arounder. Well, and the reason why it has great presence is, well, I mean, among other things, is that the, uh, the great contrast, the black, black, black dial with gold indices and hands, always, always a classic choice. Oh yeah, it's a, it, it, I think it's a nice looking watch. You had that for sale for a while, didn't you? Uh yeah, I actually have. Clive, how's legibility? Hard to tell from the camera. Oh my god. Yeah, no, it's I was just telling you about it. Legibility is great because contrast. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, it definitely looks like a lawyer. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate that. Larry says it's not always just the wrist diameter, forearm size and body size is also important. Absolutely. Um, wouldn't buy it's so ugly. Uh, which watch? You talking about my diver? Okay. Um, Clive, uh, we already answered that. Um, definitely looks like a lawyer's watch. I'm not invested. I'm not invested in a watch. It's my daily wear. I'm invested in stock. Good point. I shouldn't have used it. When I was using the term invested, I really what I meant was you're an advocate. That's what I should have said, that you're an advocate. Because um, obviously you're promoting it often on social media. So I'll use the term the advocate. Is just a daily beater. Oh, shut up. Shut up. Well, here's the shut thing, up. though. We're, really, I mean, that's the subject here. Is really, you should buy these watches and wear them and use them. And I'll tell you why I, I say that is... And I can say this because, like I said, I just turned 61 years old. So I can look back and I can say, you don't want to look back and say, I had this thing and I really liked it, but I didn't use it enough. In other words, I didn't drive my 1974 E-Type Jaguar enough. right? I wish I had driven my E-Type more. Of course, I wish it would have run more. Right, and not failed to proceed as often as it did. But anyway, <laughs> see, they don't at the Jaguar dealership. They don't say that your Jaguar broke down. They say it failed to proceed. Okay, um, but I wish I'd have driven that car more. It was a blast. V12, you know, convertible, super sexy roadster. Right. So don't look back on your life and say, "Hey, I wish I would have worn my day date 40 more and and not kept it in the box the whole time." Right. Wear right. it and use it. Life is too short not well, to enjoy. And that's and that's actually one of the things because I know a lot of times it's when you people when people say, "Well, get buy what you love," and it's almost like you get the opinion that they're being trite or just playing or just paying lip service. But I actually I actually think that is one of the most valid points you can make, though. 
is absolutely the only valid reason for a watch is I freaking like it. You only go around once. And and if you buy something like a high quality wristwatch and you really like you say you like it, wear it, unless, enjoy it. Unless you're on a merry go round, then you go around several times. Yeah. And don't sweat it if it gets a little ding on it or whatever. I mean or a Ferris wheel. Yeah. Uh, let's see. When you liken buying a Rolex to getting into a kiddie pool, what did you mean by that? Clive. Okay. Uh, wh where was that? Um, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Rolex in a lot of ways is like, here's my analogy. Rolex is like swimming in a kiddie pool in the country club. It's going to take some money. It's going to take some money to get in. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the, there is a little bit of risk, but it's pretty much safe. There's a little bit of risk and a little bit of reward. Okay. So it, it's a safe place to go into. I mean, that's why, that's why Archie Luxury talks about Rolex, 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 because if you buy halfway well and you hold on to it, you're not going to lose your butt. Well, actually, a lot of people go broke because they use that philosophy and... Yeah, the, there was a video that I watched the other day, a guy that bought a uh, Submariner new, and he was talking about his experience. You, you've probably seen it. He said he went in wearing a hoodie, and he, he didn't get any respect, yeah. you know. But then he ended up buying it anyway. You probably know the video I'm talking about. And, and he was talking about how, you know, five years later, it's going to be worth about the same amount of money. Well, okay, if that's the case, you just lost a bunch of money, right? Because you should have made money with that money. And so all these people that, that are saying um, my watch is worth the same amount as I paid for it or it's worth a little more than I paid for it, so I'm doing great. No, you're not doing great. You're going to go broke with that line of thinking. Um, so hopefully they're buying a watch that's a small part of their world that is not going to affect them financially. That's the idea here. Is you or don't they're buying a watch that they genuinely appreciate and love. Well, yeah, that's ideal. Now, uh, Dudley says, the Date 840 is incomparable, uh, boasting the new 3255 movement. I disapprove of the comparison between the Date 840 and the 36 millimeter Date 8. <laughs> so, so here's the deal, Dudley, with that. If a 36 mil Date 8 looks better on your wrist than the 40, you'd be a fool to buy the 40 just because of the newer movement. The movement that's in the 36 is perfectly acceptable. It's a great movement. As a matter of fact, there are people that could make the argument that it's more proven and that we don't know how well the new movement's going to hold up compared to the one that's in the 36. 36 is absolutely proven. It's bulletproof. So actually, you can argue could, it either way. Or, on the other hand, that he could just go and get the Oyster Quartz Day Date because... The quartz, you know, the Oyster Quartz Day Day is going to be as accurate as anything else that's out there. Oh, absolutely. And it has been proven for 20 years. On yeah. the other hand, it has an integrated bracelet. That's right. So here's Larry says, yes, Craig, and that is that is an issue with having more than four or five watches. You never wear them all. Um, and it's also a lot of money. If they're really good watches, it's a lot of money to tie up in watches. Just saying. Craig, um, what did you do for your 60th birthday? I don't remember. That was a year ago, so um, I don't have... Compared, a compared to women, though, they're a bargain. <laughs> Prenup. Prenup. <laughs> Two words. Oh, uh, is that one word? I guess that's one that's word. That's one word. Yeah, you're the lawyer. So you it's know. a hash word. Yeah. Um, what did you do for 60th? I don't remember. That was a year ago. Um... So, Craig, are you TGV's father? Who's TGV? Um, AVG. He's the T. He's the guy with the T pedophile. I mean, sorry, T with the with the pencil thin mustache. TGV. Oh, okay, I know who you're talking about. No. Um, here's a Dudley. I'm with you. The date eight forty is superior to to a date eight thirty six. This is James responding to Dudley. Um, 
trust me, you have either one, <laughs> you have a 36 yeah. mil day date on your wrist, you're doing fine. And I don't care if it's a 1960 model. It really doesn't matter with a day date. I mean, it's such an icon and so timeless. They all look fantastic. Even the ones with the, um, I'll tell you the one I like. I would buy, if somebody messaged me and said that they had a 36 mil with the conventional clasp, one of the last ones made with the conventional clasp, in mint condition, in the box, you know, like one that was a safe queen, mm -hmm. I would if the price was anywhere reasonable, I'd probably plop down and buy it just on the spot. I loved that watch. That was my first date date was a 1966 model, 1803, and it had the um, conventional clasp bracelet, you know, not the hidden clasp. So it had the micro adjustments and stuff. It yeah. was really cool. I loved that watch. It was an 1803, yeah. Yeah, I had one like that. 1966. So, likewise, was my, so was mine. With the conventional clasp? Yes, with an oyster clasp. No, well, mine had the president bracelet, but it had the conventional clasp on it. M yes. That's what yours had? Okay. Mine, yes. Cool. Mine was the safe point as well. Why'd you get rid of it? <sighs> mental, temporary mental illness? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Mine now, was not, the, the one that I had was not a safe queen. It was beat. I mean, it had a bunch of bracelet stretch. I mean, it was my first one. I got it, you know, at a pretty good price. Um, but it was, it was well, well used, I'll put it that way. But it looked great. Um, uh, there are guys who go broke in real estate. Well, yeah, but that wouldn't be smart. To go broke in real estate, but yeah, there are guys the that do it. And there's guys that go baroque in music. Yeah. Um, watches are a means to an end. If the watch only lives in your head, then what's the point? Whatever that means. The, uh, there are guys who go broke in the stock market. I get my mind on my watches and my watches on my mind. <laughs> hey, there, there are guys that go broke in the stock market. I guess so. <laughs> um. So the point is, let's just all buy watches. What the hell? And we'll be, we'll be guaranteed to stay broke. <laughs> to not only go broke, but stay broke. Um, let's see. Somebody says, uh, Habib says he wears his daily. He's talking about his day date, 40. Yeah. Cool. Is Sean? Absolutely wear it daily. Well, yeah. He's, he's like a baller. He's like an OG. He, he, he doesn't fly out to Mumbai. He sends servants out to Mumbai. Well, there you go. That's the way to do it. Um, let's see. So, uh, James Reeson, you mentioned having two Day Date 40s. Do you wear these all the time? Do you have beaters? Uh, that's for James. I prefer the classic proportions of Day Date and Sub when, when they fattened up it hurts the aesthetics. Well, yeah, the maxi case was a total disaster. Now, I like the maxi hands. I like the maxi indices. Yes. I just don't. Yeah. I agree. I just don't like those big, thick lugs. Yeah. Wristwatch check. Uh, Z Blue Mill Growls. Blue Shirt Buddha. They had the Day Date 40 movement under testing for seven years before they released it. Yeah, but that still doesn't mean it's been around as long as the movement that's in the Day Date 36. So I'm sure it's fine. I'm not saying it isn't, but I'm just saying that to say that the Day Date 36 is like a piece of garbage because this new movement is out is totally ridiculous. It's a durable workhorse movement that's been around and it's going to be fine. So there's that. Um, uh, let's see. My collection is GS Quartz, GS High Beat, GS Spring Drive, Chrono, and Rolex Milgauss. What do you guys think? Well, there you go. Which one do you wear? Let us know which one you wear more often than not. And then I'll tell you what I think. Uh, Mike Unger, I'm... All gold all the time. I don't have beaters. My collection is made up of 90% precious metal, high horology, and most pieces of the 
I guess he meant off the beaten path. Uh, of It says of the beaten path. Well, I'm not sure what he means by that, but that's cool. Yeah, I mean, gold is the is the material that, that high-end watches should be made out of. The only reason to make a watch out of steel is to cut costs. Steel is not a precious metal, even though Rolex would want folks to believe that. So there is that. Um, let's see what else we got here. And then we're going to wrap this here pretty soon. Um, yeah, well, yeah, we're already getting into an hour, so I'm going to probably yeah. have to bail. Bail like veil. Where can I find clothes and watches like Ra Rodney Dangerfield would wear? Yeah, uh, eBay. You'll be able to find that kind of stuff. <clears throat> Let's see. Um, to wear day date daily is either white gold or platinum. Otherwise, unless you are king of... No, no. 18 karat yellow gold is fine to wear daily. I, do it, I did it for, like I said, 40 years... It was fine. Nobody was offended or anything like that. It's not Johnny Utah is saying, I'm making a bold prediction to say Rolex will release an Evero Submariner. I've seen a couple of channels based. I can't think of who they are offhand, but they've already, that's been a, yeah. Let's see. Um, uh, Let's see what else there is. The Batman has the older movement. No one's saying it's crap. Well, some people do, but I think they'd be, you know, overstating things. I think they, the, the movement's fine. Spring Drive Chrono is so accurate and does it all. Could be my only watch. Okay, there you go. Absolutely, it's a GMT function on it and everything. 90% um, precious metal hierarchy. Are you talking like four or five pieces? Um... I'm making a bold prediction and say Rolex will really... Oh, okay, we already read that. After Bitcoin becomes the world primary currency, gold will not be precious metal. Uh, yeah, it always will be. It's got yeah, great properties for, for... If the price goes down, that'll only be good for jewelry. They'll only use it more for jewelry. You know, I mean, it's... No matter what, it's a great-looking metal for for all kinds of jewelry so it holds up you know basically forever it's pretty cool stuff Clive 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 looks like he was invited for a disco party at the senior center um, Clive Clive's a classy looking guy I'll tell you what he's got his act together he's out there making deals and he's in motion uh, say no to drugs. Say no to GS. Well, say yes to GS only if you want a really high-quality watch. Um, thanks for the stream. Off to work, says Tom. What do you guys think of... Of a... Uh, is he talking about Lang A? That, that brand? Is that what he's talking about there? Lang A and so I, I don't know. Okay. Lang A and Son, yeah. yeah. He's talking about yeah, Lang yeah. A. They make some good stuff, right, Clive? Yeah, they do. They absolutely do. And Yankee Doodle says, everyone stay away from Bitcoin. Yeah, absolutely. Stay away from Bitcoin. Let me buy it. I want to buy it up. So you guys stay away. Don't run the price up, for gosh sakes. I'm still accumulating. When I stop accumulating, then I'll let you guys know, and then you can start buying. How's that? Right. Yeah. All right, I think we once again solved the world's problems here. Let the folks know how they can run you down, Clivester. Uh, well, actually, I'm just clicking on my name. I'll take live stream comments, Clive Watch Wrangler. I've, my email address for my channel is Clive Watch Wrangler. Wrangler has a W and an L at gmail.com. <laughs> Clive needs to ban everyone here. Everyone here are trolls. <laughs> um, can't can't wait to laugh my ass off when BTC crashes to zero. I'm not going to be laughing. If, if it gets to zero, Clive, how many can I buy for a dollar if it's at zero? Infinity. So I can buy all of them? Right. Wow. That'd be pretty cool if I could say I owned all the Bitcoin <laughs> ever produced. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen, though. I mean, 
Man, there's right. a lot of people that are holding that say they'll never sell. So I don't know if that's going to happen. But that'd be cool. I'll corner the freaking market. Um, let's see. Thanks for another great Chip Luxury Clive stream. There you go. Uh, <laughs> somebody got to put the wrenches in there. All right. Well, I guess that's it. Um, I'll have a show. Let's see. What's today? Wednesday. I'll have a show probably next week. We're going to talk about Lisa's book, the handbook. And we're going to go through all the goodies that are in it. And it's pretty cool freaking stuff. So let's let Clive answer his phone. See if it's somebody giving him money. Is that your phone? That's my phone. Hold on. So he's going to answer the phone and uh, see if somebody's giving him money. Hello? We will laugh when Bitcoin is $10 million per coin. All right. Hey, i got to take this, Craig. I'll talk to you later. Okay? Talk to you next time. Thanks, Clivester. Yeah. Clivester's bumping out of the room. Bumping out of the room. Now, let's see here. Um, Craig and Clive, you guys run a great show. Love having a place to come to talk watches with fellow enthusiasts, says Johnny Utah. There you go. Johnny, you said I offered you a wrench once before, and you said you didn't want it, right? Our wags, didn't we offer Johnny a wrench, and he said he didn't want it? <clears throat> I own all the salt in the oceans. There you go. Um, thanks, Craig and Clyde. Entertaining show, says our wags. Um, he needs... He needs lawnmower advice. Thanks, Clive. Uh, invest in in BitConnect. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, there's a lot. There's going to be a lot of scams. There, there have been. There'll be a bunch more. Watch out for the scams. It's the wild, wild west. What you got to do is hold it on your own hardware wallet. Hold your Bitcoin safe. Control your own private keys. Don't let a third party. Don't let a third party hold your bitcoin because then it's not really your bitcoin i'm only here to troll watches and bitcoin or extra there you go i'll i take a wrench i'd take a wrench anytime love the show greg okay so we'll give johnny what what do you think our wags i'm giving johnny a wrench here there we go we got johnny a wrench johnny's in the house uh nice show all right, what do you think of the dog man's collection? <laughs> I don't like those. Uh, I think he's heavy on um, steel sport watches. Uh, personally, I'd sell a couple of them, and I'd get an all-gold date eight. I'd probably sell that. Uh, what's that one he has? The, um, the complication one. The uh, oh, Come on, tell me in the chat. Remind me in the chat. I forget what it is. It's not a yacht master. It's a, um, you know, the one, the steel and gold one that he paid fourteen grand for. I would sell that in one of the steel ones and uh, buy a nice date eight, get something that's really decent. That's what I would do. He's got way too much money in in steel watches, especially with the, um, with that case, with the. Uh, uh, maxi case. Too many of those. All right. So, um, let's see. <laughs> let's, uh, <laughs> give it sky dweller. Yeah. I mean, the sky dweller is a decent watch, but if I was going to have a sky dweller, I would have it all gold. I wouldn't have it steel and gold. Um, let's see what a sky dweller is in all gold. Let's check Chrono 24. Let's come up with the perfect watch for Mark. What do you think? Should we come up with the perfect watch for Mark? Sky dweller 18K. Let's see what comes up. Yeah. Here's one for 36. 
And see, I like the yellow gold. I don't, I don't like the rose gold. We would, there's one for 36. Is that the cheapest? Um, oh, there's one for 35. Well, 35,995. Um, box and papers. Okay, let's look at, well, let's look at this one. 36,5. Um, I mean, absolutely. How many mils thick is that? Does anybody know? Because a lot of times they won't say on these damn websites here. They won't say. Um, let me know how thick that watch is. It's 42 mil. By the way, that's the other thing. It looked big on his wrist. It did not look that great on his wrist. It looked too big. I think he'd be much better off with a 40 mil date 8, tell you the truth, or even a 36 mil on his wrist. Um, you wear a yellow gold date daily, and you say it's fine, but guess what, Craig? No one likes you anyways. I'm not, it's not going to make people like you. <laughs> Because you're wearing a day date. <laughs> it's not going to make them like you, Pedro. Um, uh, Chip is dressed like an investment banker for Goldman Sachs. Okay. Sky Dweller. Uh, let's have a wrench battle royale. <laughs> um, Grand Seiko or Rolex Explorer. So let's do the SBGH267. Whoops. Let's find that on. Um, let's find that here. Okay, so that one, here's one for 5900 at the watch box, actually, at Tim's place. Here's one for 5400 private seller. Okay, so let's look at that. This is a good comparison because those are going to be about the same price. The the 214270, the six-digit Explorer, I'm not sure how much they're going for. But um, here's the deal with the Grand Seiko. This one's the uh, high beat. They are not super thin either. So I would definitely try it on and make sure that you like it on wrist. That's not a small watch. I wish in that photo they'd had the crown screwed down. I don't know why they had the crown unscrewed. But, you know, make sure that, that, that you're good with the size of that watch and the way it fits on wrist. If it does, absolutely. I think you've got a great watch there. But those are two big ifs. That's not a small watch. You might be better off with the... Um, you might be better off with the... Uh, Pedro got hit over the head with the wrench. <laughs> what an idiot Pedro is. Um, we, we might end up just blocking him completely if, he's, if he turns out to be a total uh, dirt ball. Um, what should be a good price for mint pre-owned SBGH267? Well, I mean, looks like 50... Looks like five thousand. You'd be doing good. Rolex Gold Sky Dweller on a leather strap. I don't know that I would want it on a leather strap, but again, I I think for his wrist, that watch might be a little bit too big. Um. Buy it, Craig. Loose change for you. There you go. I I wouldn't buy that watch. First of all, I don't like the Jubilee bracelet. I mean the um, Oyster bracelet. It'll scratch up too much. Uh, the center links, those polished links. The President bracelet holds up much better. I would highly recommend that he go with the President, the Date 8. I think you're going all gold. You go President. Absolutely. The Blue Dial Sky Dweller is amazing. Yeah, I have seen the Blue Dial. It's pretty cool. 33 millimeter Patek for sale in Brisbane. Um... Pedro, can you be civil on this 
channel and so they the wrench gang doesn't have to keep deleting your messages just be civil on this channel go go to like archie's channel or something and for the garbage comments just be civil here okay um pedro's banned did somebody ban him they, they gave him a timeout. um Pedro needs to respect the host and stop trolling. Yeah, I think so. I mean, what is he, a 13-year-old kid in his mom's basement, for God's sakes? Wouldn't the number of viewers double if the trolls get unbanned? Yeah, but we don't want them. We, and, you know, we don't care how many viewers we have. We want quality, not quantity. Uh, explore. Let's, let's pull up that Explorer. Let's look at one of those. And then we'll probably call it a day. Pull up this explorer here. Oh, yeah. Stunning. Can you say stunning? See, I think that would be a better watch for Mark, for his wrist. Um, I mean, look how how gorgeous the case look at the shape of the case and the lugs look at that nice smooth bezel look at the side view that is freaking gorgeous i i don't care folks you're not going to show me a maxi case that's going to look that classy that is a classy classy piece As Archie would say, let me know what you think about that. And look, it's got the really nice clasp that everybody likes. That's hard to beat. Hard to beat that. I haven't had any issues with the voice separation of scratching, but I am a master at, at dead arming. There you go. Um... If it has one shortcoming, it's just a touch too small. Uh, you're talking about the Explorer? Um, this one's 36 mil, right? No, th it says 39 mil. Oh, that's plenty big. Oh, yeah, that's 39 mil. That's... That's plenty, 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 plenty big enough. Okay. Um, nice thin oyster bracelet. Uh, I think that's 36 mil too. Well, the one we just show, showed is 39 mil. The, the uh, 214270. It's 30, 39. Uh, let's see here. Explorer is decent. Unpopular though. So not a good investment. No watches are good investments. Watches are not, repeat, not good investments. Buy the watch you like, and don't care about what other people are, are saying is a good watch. If you don't like it, if it doesn't look good on your wrist. Now, this is, again, assuming you're buying watches to use them and wear them. That's what this show's all about, is watches to actually wear and use. Um, not watches to just sit somewhere in, in a box somewhere. If that Explorer was 18K, I would be all over it. I hear you. I hear you. Love that watch. Rumor is it might coming out in a polar version. I like that black dial though. I mean that that looks that looks freaking stunning, man. That's a great all around wear all the time, not worry about it. Affordable watch for a Rolex. Um the perfect Rolex is still Daytona forty millimeter and non max case. Yeah, but uh, to me, I I like this dial better. I don't like the cluttered dial, and I don't need those like the stopwatch buttons on the side and all that nonsense. I don't I don't need a now if I was if I needed that timing function, you know, the stopwatch function, yeah. But if I didn't need it, I'd much rather have a much cleaner looking watch, and I don't particularly like having the date on it. So that that's this is a nice clean watch. So I would take this over a Submariner Date or Daytona or, you know, I'd even take this over most of the GMTs uh, for an all-arounder, for an all-around watch. 
Um, Blue shirt wears his almost every day. There you go. I, I don't blame him. I don't blame him for that. All right, we're going to wrap it up. And remember the Cowgirls live show, if I don't do a live between now and then, the Cowgirls live show is Monday night at 10 p.m. Eastern Time, these United States. Monday night at 10. Tune in. Be there or be square, I say. Let's see. It's clean as a whistle. No date. Just put it on and wear it. Yeah. I'd take a Milgauss. The Milgauss might be a little bit thicker, Johnny. Uh, all right. Thanks, everybody. I'm going to wrap this puppy up. Oh, Brad says to shout out for Tech Webcast. I'm on his show. Um, he's recording at uh, Friday night, my time, and then it'll be released Friday night or Saturday. Uh, Tech Webcast down under Brad. Uh, I'm going to be on his uh, webcast. So he said to give a shout out for that. So we gave a nice shout out for that. Let me see if I can find this app here so I can stop this broadcast. Oh, I don't need these earbuds because Clive isn't in the use those to listen to him. So I didn't need them all the time. And one more look at the uh, Spring Drive Stunner while I wrap this puppy up. Thanks again, everybody, for watching. <laughs>